Hey YouTube, what's up? All right, so I was on the Facebook DIY Powerwall page the other day. You know, just creeping, doing my thing, liking a few pictures, reading what everybody posts, and then I'm out. That's usually how my Facebook experience goes. But one of the questions I did read was somebody asked if you could use the 18650s in a computer UPS unit. And I actually did that maybe six to eight months ago. The reason was in springtime here, we get quite a few nasty storms. I wanted to make this for our router and our modem because I was kind of tired of the power flickering, you know, that sort of thing. And if the power went out for any length of time, this would keep those afloat and I could use my other backup for any sort of TVs, refrigerators, and lights. So anyway, I went ahead and did this six to eight months ago and I kind of forgot about it until I read this post and I went and checked on my batteries and everything seemed to be okay. Uh, the battery voltage um, is around 13 and a half or so when it is fully charged because these normally have a sealed lead acid battery, which is a 12 volt battery. That's just the charging circuit on these. They only go to about 13 and a half volts. I don't know what the low end cutoff is, but that's what these tests are gonna be. Um, this is actually round two of this video the first time I, last night when I did this, um, I didn't have the microphone plugged in all the way again, so there was no sound. So some of that video testing I will put up in the corner, either here or here or wherever. There wasn't a whole lot, mainly that part of the video was soldering up this uh, pack here. This is a 4S7P and most of these batteries are the CGR 18650 CEs and these came out of, oh actually no, I think I lied. Okay, there is seven of them that are the CGR 18650 CE. There is 14 that are CGR 18650 CE. G, and then there's seven that are the CGR 18650C. So I tried to get um, about the same batteries that I could, you know, all the same capacity and roughly all the same cells each. Uh, that was about as best as I could come up with. These are all the 1900s. I did not add or try to balance any one of these. I just took them as 1900 only. And they do vary from, you know, 1993, 1960. They're kind of all over the place at 1900. So I didn't do any sort of balancing or anything like that. All right, so that is the pack here, 4S7P. I just used some of the negative wire I'm using on my big packs over there for my power wall. Uh, this should be just fine for this testing. The backup that I'm going to be using is an APC. It's a 500 and this will put out 350 watts, it says. Um, I'm not going to go the full 350 watts because I don't want to pull too much from these since these are laptop batteries. If I was going to be a little more serious in pulling some power out of one of these with this uh, few amount of batteries, I would probably use like the, the high drain batteries or the drill batteries. Basically, I would probably use drill batteries and I didn't have enough drill batteries to make this pack. Anyway, I really don't want to draw more than probably two amps from these cells. I don't know, because I don't want anything, I guess, to blow up. So anyway, the, the video yesterday was mainly me building this pack, soldering it all together, and the voltage was around uh, 16.7 I believe uh, full charged and then I plugged in a 150 watt bulb and a 100 watt bulb at the same time and drained them down for I don't know it seemed like an hour that's pretty much all the video was so today I'm gonna recreate the test and now that I'm recording I have a cat uh, of course um, today the battery voltage is 15 15, 16. So that's what we're going to be starting with today. And my goal in maybe today's testing is going to be getting down below the 13 and a half volts so this will recharge. Hopefully we can get it down until it completely shuts off and I don't have any sort of battery malfunction and that would include of them getting too hot. So I'm probably just going to start out with the 150 watt 
light bulb first and then we'll see how the batteries drain and we'll go from there. This will probably be um, at least a couple of videos in a series so we can do some testing on this pack here for the recharge and when the battery cut off and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in seeing something like that stick around and uh, we'll see how it goes. So what I'm going to do first is just hook up the battery in here and I have a kilowatt meter here so we can all see what is actually being drawn and I'll also put this on the battery so we can see the, the voltage from there too. Alright so I will do this real quick. I will also probably, I'm going to have this probably propped up on its side and I'll use a different camera mount so I can have this uh, on its side because I want to keep the back open so I can have the, the multimeter leads on the batteries. So I'll probably have it tilted to the side and I want to make sure that you can see the numbers on here and on the, the voltmeter. So this might be a little funky on here trying to get it all to play nicely. And I'm probably going to put some tape on this just to make sure nothing uh, accidentally shorts itself out. I didn't put any fuses on here or anything like that. And I'll probably put a piece of tape over it so it won't fall out. Alright, now that I have this kind of set up here, I'm just going to switch tripods and we'll get on with the test. My little helper. Okay. You can see that. I'm going to plug in the battery back up real quick. I'll turn it on and it's going to do its own little self-test. And you'll probably see the battery voltage go down. Okay, now it's on battery for the moment. Okay, so right now we are not pulling any power. I have the 100 watt light bulb plugged in. I have it off camera so it's not too bright and blinding. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on real quick. Okay, so we'll see how many watts it's pulling right now. It's a 148 watts and 1.2 amps. Okay, so we will go ahead and start this test. And during the test, I will probably go through fast forward and put a timer on it for you so you don't have to sit here and watch the entire thing. And throughout the test, I will try to at least hit the volt, amp, and watt meter for you so you can see those. I will also be randomly taking the temperature of the battery. All right, let's uh, get started. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. Uh, this will probably make a buzzing noise. Uh, if it does, I'll try to mute that out. All right, here we go. Corn tech.
Okay, so this is pretty much how the test is going to go. I'll continue draining the batteries. I just didn't want to leave you sitting there watching this the entire time. Once the batteries get down a little bit lower, I will start recording again and maybe we can get the actual cutoff voltage and uh, go from there. After that, I will plug it back in and let this go ahead and recharge all the batteries back up. Uh, I was taking just random temperatures. The cells that are on the upper side, of course, are the warmest because all the heat is rising to the top. Uh, but the lower ones, or the lowest one that I can read, is around 79 degrees. And of course the upper ones where all the heat is at, it's around 98.5. All right, so I will continue draining the batteries. any other suggestions that you would like to see during this testing uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will be sure to include that if I'm able to again um, if if I were to do this any better I would use uh, drill batteries or at least high drain batteries I just didn't want to go much over an amp or so during the discharge because I don't want things to get too hot all right we'll see you on the next one and don't forget to like comment and subscribe Uh, um, uh, uh, and, and, uh, um, 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 if you can see that. No, 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 no. Um, uh, and, um, as, uh, and, um, 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 uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, the, the, and.